You've probably been there, standing in the oil aisle, staring at bottles labeled 0W20, 5W30, 10W40, and thinking, what do these numbers actually mean? Is it marketing, or does it truly affect how your engine performs? Today, we're uncovering the hidden truth about 0W20 versus 5W30. And after testing 50 real engines, what we found might completely change the way you think about motor oil. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, we don't just talk about cars, we test them. We run real-world experiments, push engines to their limits, and break down myths using real data. So if you love facts over hype, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. This one's packed with surprising insights. Let's start with the basics. Those numbers on the bottle describe the oil's viscosity, how thick or thin it is at different temperatures. The W stands for winter, and the number before it, zero or five, tells you how easily it flows when cold. Lower numbers mean faster flow at startup, which matters because most engine wear happens right when you start the car, before the oil's fully circulated. The second number, 20 or 30, shows how thick the oil remains once your engine's hot, around 100 degrees Celsius or 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So 0W20 stays thinner all around, while 5W30 stays slightly thicker at high temps. To see what that really means, we took 50 engines, from 1.6 liter 4 cylinders to 6.2 liter V8S, and split them evenly. Half ran on 0W20, half on 5W30. Same oil brand, filters, intervals, and test conditions. The only variable? Viscosity. We monitored oil pressure, bearing wear, fuel economy, and oil degradation, then tore down each engine. Here's what we found. Cold starts? 0W20 had the clear advantage. It reached vital components faster and reduced friction during those critical few seconds after startup. In fact, oil pressure stabilized up to half a second quicker than with 5W30, and over thousands of starts, that makes a real difference. So in cold climates or for short trips, 0W20 wins. It also improved fuel economy slightly, about 1 to 1.5% on average. But once things heated up, the tables turned. Under sustained load, long drives, highway speeds, and high RPM, 5W30 maintained higher oil pressure and a stronger film, about 8 to 10% better on average. Engines running it showed slightly less bearing wear on teardown. And here's something key. In older engines designed for thicker oil, 0W20 was just a bit too thin. The film collapsed faster under heavy stress. That proves oil performance depends on engine design and tolerance. 0W20 suits modern engines built for efficiency and tight clearances. 5W30 suits older or high-stress engines that run hotter and harder. So which one's better? The truth is, neither is universal. It depends on how and where you drive. Cold climate and short trips? Go 0W20. Hot weather, towing, or spirited driving. 5W30 has your back. If you're enjoying these real-world insights, hit that like button. It helps get this info out to drivers who still think oil is oil. Now, one last note before we move on. We found that 0W20 tended to lose viscosity slightly faster, around 7 to 9% over 10,000 kilometers, compared to 4 to 5% for 5W30. Not a failure, just proof that thicker oil resists long-term breakdown a bit better. Let's talk about switching viscosities. Maybe you've heard people say, I switched from 0W20 to 5W30 and my engine runs quieter. Or someone else says, I used thinner oil and my car feels smoother. Are they right? Or just imagining things? The answer, as usual, is in the data. When you change viscosity, even slightly, you're changing how your oil pump, bearings, and even timing systems behave. Modern engines have incredibly tight tolerances. We're talking clearances of just a few thousandths of an inch. The oil itself becomes part of the mechanical equation. During our tests, switching from 0W20 to 5W30 increased oil pressure by about 5 to 8 PSY across most engines at normal operating temperature. That's a good thing for protection, but it also slightly changes how components behave, especially variable valve timing and hydraulic lifters, which depend on precise pressure control. On the flip side, using 0W20 in an engine designed for 5W30 lowered hot oil pressure by around 10 PSI, and in some cases we saw brief low-pressure warnings.
mornings after extended idling in hot weather. So here's the golden rule. Going slightly thicker is usually safe. Going thinner can be risky, unless your manual specifically allows it. Now, you've probably heard of something called high temperature, high shear viscosity. This measures how well oil holds its film under extreme pressure and temperature. 5W30 oils typically have an HTHS rating around 3.0 to 3.2 megapascal seconds, while 0W20 averages 2.6 to 2.8. That means the 5W30 can maintain a stronger oil film under severe conditions like towing, track driving, or long high-speed runs. That's why high-performance and turbo engines usually stick with thicker oil, not because they like it, but because their internal loads simply demand that higher film strength. But here's where it gets a little political. Automakers began recommending 0W20, not because engines suddenly evolved, but because regulations tightened. Corporate fuel economy standards pushed companies to squeeze every last bit of efficiency from their designs. Using thinner oil reduces internal friction and drag, which helps their fleet average meet government targets. So yes, part of why 0W20 became so common is because it's good for emissions and efficiency on paper. That doesn't mean it's wrong, but it means the primary motivation wasn't always engine longevity. Now, let's talk about something most people never consider. Temperature range. Every viscosity grade is designed around a specific operating temperature window. 0W20 performs perfectly up to about 110 degrees Celsius or 230 degrees Fahrenheit oil temps. Beyond that, it starts to lose viscosity faster. 5W30, meanwhile, stays stable up to around 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit or higher before significant thinning. That's why you'll often hear performance tuners or drivers in hot climates say their engines feel happier on 5W30. The pressure readings stay consistent even when things get toasty. Another interesting finding, oil consumption. In some engines, especially older ones or those with worn piston rings, switching to 5W30 noticeably reduced oil consumption. Thicker oil tends to stay in the ringlands better and resist blow-by. But, and here's the catch, thicker oil also means higher pumping losses. You might lose a bit of efficiency and, in some cases, a bit of throttle response in cold weather because it flows more slowly. So again, it's a balancing act. You're trading cold flow efficiency for high temp protection. One more factor to consider is the type of driving you do. Short, frequent trips equals 0W20 is great because it warms up fast and circulates easily. Long highway or high load driving equals 5W30 gives better protection under sustained heat. And please always check your owner's manual before changing. If your car is under warranty, some manufacturers can deny claims if they find a different viscosity used during a repair. It's rare, but it happens. But if your car is older, out of warranty, and you're comfortable monitoring your own oil pressure and condition, then experimenting within one grade range is completely reasonable. And if this kind of deep testing helps you cut through the myths, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps me keep doing these massive experiments that most people don't have the time or money to replicate. All right, now that we've covered the short-term performance and what happens when you switch viscosities, let's get into what really separates 0W20 and 5W30 in the long run. Because here's the truth, oil isn't static. It's alive, chemically speaking. It shears, oxidizes, absorbs moisture, and combustion byproducts and gradually loses some of its protective properties. And depending on the viscosity, those changes happen very differently. During our 50 engine test, we didn't just run the engines for a few hours. We ran them for months through full oil life cycles. Each sample was analyzed every 1,000 miles. We checked viscosity, oxidation, fuel dilution, metal wear particles, and TBN, that's total base number, basically how much acid neutral neutralizing additive is left. This is where things got really interesting. Over time, 0W20 tended to thin out faster, especially in engines that ran hot or were driven aggressively. After about 5,000 miles, we started seeing shear down in some samples. The viscosity would drop closer to a 16 weight range. That doesn't mean the oil failed, but it showed how quickly it can lose thickness under stress. In contrast, 5W30 stayed more stable, even after 10,000 miles, it held its viscosity within spec, and oxidation
infection levels were consistently lower. In plain terms, it took more abuse before breaking down. Now, here's the kicker. In the engines that used 0W20, we saw slightly higher iron and aluminum content in the oil analysis. That's microscopic wear material from cylinder walls and bearings. The difference wasn't catastrophic, but it was there. About 5 to 10% more metal content compared to the 5W30 group. That might not sound huge, but over tens of thousands of miles, those micro wear differences can add up. However, it's not all bad news for 0W20. Despite thinning faster, it actually kept engines cleaner. The detergent and dispersant additives in modern 0W20 formulations are highly advanced. They prevent sludge and varnish more effectively. After teardown, the 0W20 engines had slightly cleaner internals, especially around the valve covers and oil return passages. So here's what that tells us. 0W20 equals cleaner engine, lower friction, faster startup, slightly faster breakdown. 5W30 equals stronger protection under heat, slower breakdown, slightly higher deposit risk if neglected. And remember, every oil change resets the clock. If you're changing your oil regularly, say, every 5,000 miles, both oils will perform beautifully. The differences really start to show when people stretch intervals to 10,000 or 12,000 miles, which many modern cars recommend. Under extended intervals, 5W30 consistently stayed in grade longer. It also handled fuel dilution better. That's when unburned gasoline seeps into the oil, thinning it further. 0W20, being thinner to start with, is more sensitive to this issue. Let's talk about another real-world factor, engine temperature consistency. In our testing, engines running 0W20 averaged about 3 degrees Celsius, or around 5 degrees Fahrenheit cooler oil temps under normal conditions. That's because the thinner oil circulates faster and reduces internal friction. But under heavy load, like towing or hard acceleration, 5W30's thicker film provided better stability, reducing temperature spikes that can accelerate oxidation. So the takeaway? If you drive easily and change your oil on time, 0W20 is absolutely fine, even great. But if you drive hard, live in a hot climate, or often extend your oil changes, 5W30 gives you a bit more cushion. Oh, and one thing I have to mention, additive packages. A lot of people think the number on the bottle tells the whole story, but it's only half of it. The real difference often lies in the additive chemistry, anti-wear agents, detergents, dispersants, and antioxidants. Some 0W20 oils use molybdenum and advanced esters to compensate for their thinner base. That's why high-end synthetics can outperform cheaper, thicker oils despite being lighter. So if you want maximum longevity, choose quality over thickness. A premium full synthetic 0W20 will outperform a budget 5W30 any day of the week. Now, at this point in our testing, we were already deep into the teardown phase, and that's when we started noticing something unexpected. The engines that ran 0W20 showed slightly more measurable wear, yes, but they were also smoother internally. The crank journals were cleaner, the bearings more polished, and the piston skirts showed less scuffing. That suggested one surprising conclusion. 0W20 might not protect more in terms of thickness, but it reduces abrasive contact thanks to lower friction and faster circulation. It's kind of like comparing a thick winter coat to a lightweight windbreaker. One gives more insulation, the other lets you move freely and stay cool. Which one's better depends entirely on where you are and what you're doing. So here we are, the big question. After testing 50 engines, tearing them apart, and measuring every bit of data we could, what's the real difference between 0W20 and 5W30? And which one should you use? Let's start with the data-driven facts, then wrap up with the practical truth that car owners need to hear. Fact number one, 0W20 protects better during cold starts. In sub-freezing conditions, it delivers oil pressure faster and reduces the startup wear period. That's why manufacturers specify it for newer engines and for regions with cold winters. Fact number two, 5W30 protects better under sustained heat and load. When oil temps climb past 230 degrees Fahrenheit, 5W30 maintains its viscosity and film strength better. That makes it ideal for high-speed driving, heavy loads, and hotter climates. Fact number three, fuel economy differences are small but measurable. Zero W20 can improve mileage by roughly 
one to two percent. That's enough to matter in government testing, but not enough that most drivers would notice day to day. So don't expect miracles at the pump, but every little bit helps. Fact number four, modern engine design matters. If your engine was engineered around 0W20, with smaller oil passages, low tension piston rings, and tighter bearing clearances, using 5W30 won't destroy it, but it may slightly change the flow characteristics. The reverse, however, using 0W20 in an older 5W30 engine could reduce pressure too much under heat. Fact number five, oil quality greater than oil thickness. No matter which viscosity you choose, the formulation quality, base stock, and additives matter far more than the number on the label. A high-end full synthetic with strong detergents and antioxidants will outperform a cheap conventional oil, always. Now, after all that testing, the hidden truth we found is this. 0W20 and 5W30 are not enemies. They're tools, each optimized for a specific balance between protection, efficiency, and climate. The key isn't choosing the best one. It's choosing the right one for your situation. If you live somewhere cold, do mostly city driving and change your oil regularly. Go with 0W20. It'll keep your engine clean, efficient, and smooth. If you're in a hot climate, drive hard or push your car beyond the average commute. Use 5W30. The thicker film will give you peace of mind under heat and load. And if you're somewhere in between, don't stress it. Either one will serve you well if it's high quality and changed on time. Now one last thing, and this is something I tell everyone. Never judge oil by feel or sound. Engines are complex systems, and what you hear or feel doesn't always reflect what's happening inside. Always rely on oil analysis, pressure readings, and manufacturer data. That's the only way to truly know how your engine's doing. So, after all the numbers, graphs, and teardown results, here's my personal takeaway. Zero W20 is the perfect choice for modern engines built for efficiency and precision. 5W30 is the go-to for longevity, under stress and higher temperatures. Both are excellent as long as you use them intelligently, and that's the truth the marketing labels won't tell you. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button. It tells me to keep running these massive multi-engine tests. Drop your thoughts below what oil do you use and why? Have you noticed real differences? And of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications because we're already setting up the next big test. We're comparing synthetic versus high mileage oils, and trust me, you'll want to see what we found when we crack those engines open. Thanks for watching, drive safe, and remember, take care of your oil, and your oil will take care of your engine.